This video is about fixed and random summaries with preferred format binary input. So I'm going to show you how to do fixed and random effects analysis on binary data. Um, so for the uh, overall summary, Metaphor uses inverse variance weights to combine the effect sizes to one, uh, one overall summary. And you can specify fixed or random effects. And if you specify random effects, you can specify the algorithm, the, um, the kind of calculation used to find the random effects variance. And you do that with the method statement. Um, if you input the uh, effect sizes in the preferred format, which I'm going to show you in a second, then you can use the measure option to tell um, metaphor what uh, effect size you want to analyze. So uh, if you don't do that, then you need to use the generic input and you have to create the effect size that you want to analyze from your original data. Okay, so in, uh, in most studies in medicine and epidemiology, they compare success and failure, so the number of events and the number of non-events in two conditions, a treatment group and a control group, some, some kind of two groups. And um, the events and non-events by the two groups gives you a four-fold table, a two-by-two two table. And the number of cases uh, should be counted and recorded for each cell. So here's cell A, cell B, cell C, cell D. Um, so that's the preferred format. And the labels that Metaphor uses are shown in this table. So A sub I, B sub I. N1 sub I is equal to the sum of A sub I and B sub I. And you got C sub I, D sub I, and then 2 sub I is the sum of these two. You can either input these four, or you can input A and N1 and C and N2, because obviously these things add up, so it can figure out the missing one if you do that. Okay, so let's say that you put in A, B, C, D, like that. And uh, then you can instruct Metaphor to compute the following using the measure equals whatever. So measure could equal RR for risk ratio, and that's um, here's the percentage of people or the proportion of people <laughs> in the uh, who who got the event in the treatment group and compared to the proportion in the control group. So that's the risk ratio. The odds ratio is uh, A to B compared to C to D, so it's um, events to non-events, events to non-events, and comparing those two. Risk difference is uh, the uh, proportions compared. And then arc sine is a transformation of the risk difference, and pedo is a transformation of the, uh, the log odds. So those are the choices that you have. and. Uh, um, these are the probably the most common, but you pick what you like. Uh, let's see. A common problem in binary tables is empty cells. So if you have small numbers of people in your studies, or if you're dealing with very rare events, then uh, some of your cells can have zeros. And that's particularly nasty if B or D has zeros in it because you wind up dividing by zero, which, as you know, <laughs> causes a problem. Um, so uh, you have choices about that in metaphor. You can leave it alone, you can add a small number to every cell in the analysis, or you can add a small number to the tables, the four cells in the tables that contain one or more cells with zero frequency. So the way you do that uh, is by the add and the to command. So the add command says uh, add some number. So you can set add to equal to 0.5. So you can add a half to each um, to each cell in the table. Then 2 says uh, where to add 2. So you can say 2 is all, in which case it takes this value of add. If it's 0.5, it would add 0.5 to every cell in every table in the analysis. Or you can say 2 equals only 0, in which case it'll add that value, say 0.5, to every cell in any table that contains at least one zero entry. So all gives it to every table only zero 
applies the add value to only some of the um, the tables. It doesn't it doesn't do anything to the tables that don't have zero entries. If you leave it alone, you don't have the add and the two, then um, well, if there's a division by zero, then the result is set to missing. It gets kicked out. Okay, so now I want to um, show you some analyses in R. Um, I made up some data on mindfulness and uh, insomnia, and um, I'm going to show you six different analyses. I'm going to run the uh, uh, odds ratio and um, use Dersimonian and Laird for the uh, REVC estimation. I'm going to run a, a, a risk ratio, same um, estimator, then run the odds ratio with Dersimony and Laird, and I'm going to add 0.5 to all of the tables. Do the same thing, only I'm going to add um, 0.5 to only the tables with zero. Uh, then I'm going to compare uh, this last one with Dersimony and Laird to one that uses uh, restricted maximum likelihood to estimate. So uh, you can see, um, you know, each of these things is different by only one thing, so you get some idea of what's, what it's doing. And then lastly, I'm going to show you a fixed analysis of uh, the same data. All right, so it ran the stuff. It said uh, mindful debt. So I'm reading an Excel file from my desktop of mindfulness. And uh, I'm calling it mindful debt. And here's mindful debt. And it prints out the study date uh, frequencies for each of the cells, A, B, C, D. And then I've got a moderator here that I'm not going to use right now, but there it is. So um, I printed out the data that I've checked it against my input file. That is, in fact, what I wanted to read in. And now I'm going to do some meta-analysis. So uh, the first model, um, results one, uh, in RMA is gets RMA, which is um, metaphor. And notice I'm going to say A sub I, which is metaphors. Uh, representation of what goes in the first cell is equal to A, so A is going in there, B sub I is their second, and that I set to B, C sub I is labeled C here, and D sub I is labeled D here. And because I've used this preferred format, I can use the measure uh, command, and I want measures odds ratio, the method of um, estimating the random effects variance component is Dersimonian and Laird, and data is mindful of that, and of course that's this object here. So it runs, and it doesn't say anything, uh, and I ask it to uh, print uh, mindful results one, and it does. It says, uh, I've got nine studies. Um, Dersimony and Laird was used to estimate tau squared. My value of tau is 2282. I squared is uh, 75 and change, almost 76. Um, heterogeneous, uh, statistically heterogeneous set of studies. The estimate is minus 0.2866, which favors the mindfulness training, of course, because I made up the data. And um, confidence interval is minus 47 to minus 10. And um, this is a log odds. So if you wanted odds, you'd have to take the, the exponent of these things to um, see the odds. Okay, so there it is. Um, that's how you tell a, a simple random effects analysis for uh, binary data. Uh, now I've done the same thing, so uh, results 2 gets metaphor when I'm reading in the same data, and now I'm asking for risk ratio instead of odds ratio, and everything else is the same. So uh, metaphor gladly goes through and, whoops, hey, computes the, um, the uh, risk ratio for me. And now it says um, tau is 13 instead of 23. Uh, we got an I square of 81 versus um, 76. And we have an estimate of 16 rather than 29. And it goes from 27 to 05 negative on both sides. All right, so we still get a negative value, but notice that this is a the log of the risk ratio rather than the log of the odds ratio.
All right, there's the second analysis. The third analysis, what have I done here? Come on. All right. Uh, a, B, C, D. So here we've got the preferred format again. We're going to put that in results three. Uh, I'm doing odds ratio. I've got the Dersimonian and Laird estimator still. Now I've set the add value. So if there's going to be a zero cell. I've set add value to 0.5 and I've set it to all. So <clears throat> I'm going to add 0.5 to every entry in every table. And I'm going to do the same analysis as I did last time. Well, not last time, but the odds ratio. All right. And so when I do that, I've got um, the, uh, the same nine studies, the same uh, estimator. Uh, I've got 23 for my uh, tau. I've got uh, 76 for I squared. And I've got two, minus 2860, <clears throat> excuse me, minus 47 and 10. So let's go back up and look at what happened when we didn't have that add in there. Uh, all right, here we go. So um, here it is without the add, and it's got uh, 228275 and 2866. And we have 2860, uh, 752277 instead of 82. So it's quite close, even though we added a 0.5. And if you look at the Data, you can see why the adding a 0.5 is not going to make much difference. I mean, one study with the zero value is it's in the um, in the A slot, and it's a small study, so it's not going to be terribly influential anyhow. All right, so that's number three. Number four, um, we're still doing uh, metaphor with the same data, odds ratio, Dersimony and Laird, add a 0.5. And now we're only going to add that 0.5 to the tables that have zero. And you know, there's only, you know because we just looked, there's only one of those. All right, so uh, we've got from, my mouse is misbehaving. All right, we got 2277, 2282, 75, 75, minus 28, minus 28. So very, very um, uh, similar results. And that's not surprising given the data. And uh, I want to show you number five. Uh, same input, same um, measure. Uh, now it's a restricted maximum likelihood instead of Dersimonian and Laird. So we got two, eight, four, three versus, I'm sorry, two, four, eight, three versus two, eight, two, two, eight, two, 75, 78, and our estimates. That's really annoying, isn't it? Um, our estimates uh, are 2890 versus 2866 and minus 48 to 09, 46 to 10. So um, the, the uh, restricted maximum likelihood resulted in a slightly larger value of tau, and that changed the confidence interval and the uh, overall estimate. So you get close, but not exactly the same when you use the different um, Estimators, and the last analysis that I wanted to show you is the sixth, and um, everything is the same except for now we're going to do method is uh, fixed effects, and when we do that there there's no estimator for the random effects variance component. We still have heterogeneous studies, and we get um, 0.25 is our estimate, and it goes from minus 13 to minus 16. So you see a, a shallow um, a narrower uh, confidence interval here because you don't have to add the value of tau into your uncertainty compared to the random effects analysis. So that is how you would get a fixed effects analysis if you want one. Okay, so that's the uh, analysis of binary data for uh, fixed and random overall summaries in metaphor.